In this drawing tutorial, I will show you how to draw this interior view of a kitchen in one point perspective. How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this perspective drawing tutorial where I am actually going to be drawing an interior view, which is rare for me. I typically draw exteriors of buildings and whatnot, but this should be a good change. To begin, I place the horizon line directly across the centre of the page and this is our eye level. It is one continuous line, like so. I then begin to outline what will be our picture frame, which will be a rectangle, and this is the border for our drawing. Now the next thing I do is I add a vertical halfway line, one which divides the picture plane in quarters and passes the horizon line and where these cross directly in the centre will be our vanishing point. So instead of just dotting the vanishing point on like I usually do, I've just drawn this centre line here because I want the vanishing point for this drawing to be central and in general I find it useful to have a line that is vertical down the middle of your drawing. So we have the horizon line, picture plane and vanishing point marked out now and so now it's time to start constructing the drawing and as always I'll continue to walk you through this step by step. Before we begin I want to give a quick shout out to my ongoing perspective drawing series that is available on the channel as well as my Patreon page where I create exclusive drawing tutorials just like this one. All of this content will help you learn the fundamental rules when it comes to drawing in perspective. Anyways, here I'm going to start by outlining a small rectangle around the middle of the drawing here. And this is slightly off center and extending more to the right. And this will be the back wall of the room that I'm constructing. And so to establish the other walls, ceiling and floor of this room, I take a line from the vanishing point in the center through each of its corners. I'll start at the bottom left and I extend this one so that it continues past the picture plane. You can use the picture plane I have here as a reference and see whereabouts my extending lines cross it. Now I'll draw the top left line and again I make sure these lines are heading from the vanishing point through the corner of that rectangle and I extend these past the picture plane. I'll now draw out the top right line and the bottom right line. All of these are converging to our one vanishing point in the center. Okay, so as I said, imagine this rectangle to be the back wall of an empty room, and these converging lines represent the edges of the walls, ceiling, and the floor. And so now, if you have something like this, you are now ready to start filling that empty room. So here I start by drawing out a horizontal line around here that extends out this far. Again, as you follow along, try to pay attention to where I draw these lines. Now from the end of this, I'll draw another small line that will converge to the vanishing point. Although I don't actually draw every line to the vanishing point, you'll notice that I still have the ruler directed towards it. And so from the end of this, I'll draw another line back to this wall. Okay, so now we have this thin rectangle drawn out on the floor, and now I will take another line from the vanishing point, making sure it crosses this rectangle around here, and I extend this to the edge of the picture plane. So just to give some context, what I'm doing here is I'm outlining the bottom planes of what's going to be the worktops and tables of this kitchen we are drawing. This is to establish the position and the size of everything before I extrude them up but we'll get to that and it will make more sense if it, if it doesn't already. So I have outlined the bottom of what will be the kitchen worktop wrapping around the wall and there's also going to be a, a table in the middle of this kitchen so that's what I will position now. So I will begin by drawing out a line from the vanishing point down to the left here and this will be the bottom left edge of the table that I'm going to be drawing. I'll now draw a horizontal line that represents the back edge of that table. I'll draw this at a width that I want my table to be at and I also offset this line away from the rectangle behind it because of course we need some space between this and what is going to be the kitchen worktop. And so now I'll draw in that line for the bottom right edge which again comes from the vanishing point. And finally I will finish this rectangle by drawing its front edge up here. 
Okay, so as you can see, I have what is similar to a floor plan here, showing the position of the kitchen worktops and the tables. However, right now, these are flat and two-dimensional, and so now we need to begin extruding some of this upwards. Now, at the end of that rectangle at the back there, there is going to be a section of wall that extrudes up to the ceiling. And I'm going to start with that but if I was to try and draw that in right now, I wouldn't know whereabouts it meets the ceiling. And so what I have to do here is firstly take a line from the back right corner of the rectangle where it meets the wall and draw out some guidelines, which involves a line running vertically until it meets the ceiling. And then a line from that point that comes out horizontally to the other side. And you'll see why I did this now, because here I go back to this corner at the end of the rectangle to draw the wall and I draw a vertical line upwards and now I know where this vertical line meets the ceiling thanks to this line that I had wrapped around the wall and the ceiling. If I didn't have that I wouldn't know where to end this vertical line. Hopefully that makes sense. This happens when I draw this next vertical line up from the other corner, except I'm able to find the end of this by drawing the short line at the top which converges to the vanishing point. I have now drawn in the side of this wall and I will add some thickness to this by simply extending it out horizontally. So that's our first three dimensional form constructed for this drawing and I deliberately started with this wall here because now I'm going to draw out the top of the worktop which wraps around the wall. If you haven't noticed we have also created another backplane here as I was constructing this wall. And that's useful because now I'm going to find a height that I am happy with for this worktop and draw out a horizontal line along this back plane from this new wall to the one on the right. I'll now take a line from the end of this from the vanishing point along the wall. I also need to take another line from the vanishing point through the point in which this line meets that vertical line to establish the back top edge of the worktop running along the wall on the right here. Now at the end of this I can take a line back to the wall on the right and again I know where to end this thanks to the line that I had drawn previously. Now from the corner of the bottom plane I project up a vertical line until it meets the top of that line and then I draw a line from the vanishing point which passes through the point in which those two lines met and this establishes the front edge for the top of the worktop at this side. So now, as you can see, I have these rectangular boxes wrapping around the wall. Now, I also want there to be a set of cupboards above the worktop on this back wall here, and so I'll outline another box like so. I start by drawing out where I want the bottom of these cupboards on the back plane, and I also draw out a line for the top. I now have to draw some smaller lines from the vanishing point and extrude this forwards, creating another rectangular box. You can see how I draw out its side plane here at the side of this wall and I bring some more lines across to the other side to finish drawing this in. So now I'm going to extrude up this table here and I'll start by bringing up a vertical line from this corner here to a height that I am happy with for the table. From the top of this I take a line back to the vanishing point and I'll bring a line across to the other side. I connect this to the bottom like so and from this corner I can also draw a line back to the vanishing point in the centre. I then draw a line up from that back corner until it meets the converging line and I do the same at the other side. I then can easily connect these to finish drawing out this box for the table. Okay so we are making some good progress now and hopefully the way that I'm approaching this isn't too hard to follow. What I am going to do now is add some detail to these walls and here I'll start by drawing out some edges for the walls of this kitchen. I also extend a line from the vanishing point across the ceiling, one which meets the corner of this wall and defines an edge. And my camera cut off there for a second so I apologise for that but you didn't miss much. You can see here how I've drawn a new set of lines around the edges of the wall which I had drawn a moment ago along with drawing in some lines across the ceiling from the vanishing point. So now at this stage we have a lot of the main features blocked out but I still have a few things to draw out here. 
One of them is the extraction fan that will be above the cooker to the left of this worktop and this of course is blocked out as a box first and then I add a sloping rectangle underneath it. If you haven't realised yet, almost everything we draw is constructed using boxes. That's why it's so useful to practice drawing them in perspective. Also, when working in one point perspective, like we are doing here, we will only have one set of lines converging. The other lines will either be horizontal or vertical. Here I add a line which wraps around the bottom of the worktop, as well as at the bottom of what will be some kitchen cupboards to the left. I haven't drawn them in yet, but now I'm at a stage where I have all of this blocked out and I can begin working into everything in more detail. So at this stage I'm going to place this into a time lapse and discuss what's happening on screen in general. You shouldn't have a hard time following along now because the drawing has been blocked out and we have established the position of everything in this space. So I'm going to start here by working into this table. I offset some lines around its edges and use the vanishing point to push these back. I create two new side planes underneath and add another line for its back plane. Now I move up to the top of the kitchen and start to draw out a light which will hang from the ceiling. I work my way around the worktop adding some thickness to the front as this is going to be sat on some cupboards which I also outline. As I said, here to the right there is going to be the cooker and also a set of drawers which I outline. I try to keep these outlines simple and avoid adding too much detail right now. I outline the cupboards which are above at the back as well. So now I can also start outlining some of the cupboards that will be on this wall to the left. This has been blank up to now, but here I add a line at the back and then I'll take a line from the vanishing point along the top. I add another line a little further forward and then I use the duplication technique to add another section that will be at the same size just further forward. I have covered this method many times before so I'll link the video in which I explain it. If you haven't guessed already this is a, a more of a, a modern kitchen as opposed to something more traditional. Okay so I have added some more lines to all of this and you can start to understand what everything is now. However we are not done yet though, I still need to add some more of the more complex features. This includes the stools that are going to be at the front of this table here as well as some of the appliances that I'll be drawing on the worktops. All of these details are optional of course and you can do this anywhere you wish. I'll place this into a time lapse and you can see how I draw out these three stools. Because there's going to be three of these, I want them all to be aligned evenly and so that's why you can see me drawing out the bases of them on the ground plane here. I'm going to make the base of these stools square and so I divide these up to find the centre of each of them. I now project up the leg of the stool and start to draw in the chair freehand. This will probably appear a lot more sketchier in comparison to the cleaner lines that I have drawn using the ruler. But I try to rely less on the ruler when I get to the stage where I'm adding most of the detail. If you have watched many of my other tutorials, you will know that I always take the same approach with each drawing and of course this interior view is no different. So I'm nearly finished drawing out these stools, I'm just drawing the footrest on each of them and these stools are probably the most complex part of this drawing so if you can do this then you won't have too much trouble from here on out. Now I'm almost finished outlining the drawing, there's just a few more things left to do and one of them is to grid out this floor here and this grid that I'm going to draw out could be the lines of some tiles on the floor or it could just help guide you when creating any pattern in general. Here I'm taking some lines down from the vanishing point, making sure they are equally spaced across the floor. And then I'll draw some horizontal dividing lines. However, seeing as these are receding into the distance towards the horizon line, they will appear smaller the further away they are. And so to create this effect accurately, I again use the duplication technique 
Again, if you are unsure on how to do this, then watch that video and then come back to this. So there we go, most of the drawing now has been constructed and so here I'll work over all of this, applying more pressure with the pencil to make these outlines nice and clear. This is really the stage where you can make the drawing your own. So now at this stage you are free to finish the drawing however you like but for this example I'm going to spend some time at the end here rendering all of this in pencil. So here on screen you can see how I do this and most of this process is self explanatory. I'm creating a lot of textures with the pencil and shading in everything that I have drawn here. So I'll let this stage play out in time lapse until the end. So there we go, that is how to draw an interior view of a kitchen in one point perspective. I hope that you enjoyed this one, I'll be sure to do more interiors in the future if it's something that you'd like to see, and so with that being said, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.